for linoleum printmaking. So for those of you guys that don't know, printmaking is the process where you are making a print and you're using an object, usually called a plate, that you put ink on and then you put paper on top of it and it transfers the design from the plate to the paper. So the great thing about printmaking is you can make things over and over and over and over again. For this project, we're going to be doing linoleum printmaking. So linoleum is a super stretchy, super rubbery stuff. We are using soft cut linoleum, so it's very, very easy to carve. You guys are going to be using these carving tools. They are sharp on the end, so we're going to take a lot of precautions with these. Uh, you're going to be using a thin one and a rounded one that kind of carves a little bit deeper. Those will be your two options. So this is an example of what your project is gonna turn out like. You guys are going to carve a stamp with a living creature, place, or thing. Uh, so right here is some wood grain. I got a beautiful birch tree. I got a snowy owl like Hedwig, and I got a peacock feather uh, down here too. You guys are going to obviously carve, and then you're going to stamp your design six times on a long piece of paper. If you've ever seen a film strip before, that's what it's kind of going to look like. Then once your ink has dried, you're going to draw over the image with whatever type of art material you'd like, anything from watercolor, color pencils, to marker. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to do some basic designing. We're going to come up with an idea and before going on our linoleum. So the, it's really important that every part of the project that you make sure that you put your name and your period um, on your paper, on your tracing paper, on your linoleum, on your final printed copy so that it doesn't get lost in the room since we are working a little bit smaller with this mini project. So step one is to sketch a living creature, place, or thing in the box below. There are two provided in case you want to do the front and the back only if you have extra time or if you just need to practice boxes. I recommend taking up the most of the space. These little stamps are only two inches by three inches. So I'm just going to sketch out whatever type of design I want. I'm gonna go for a crystal type design today. Today, So if you need to, you can have your Chromebook out and you can be referencing a photograph of something that you would like to draw. I'm just going from my memory here. Now that I have my design the way that I like it, I filled up my space from top to bottom and side to side, I'm ready to move on to step two, which is trace your design onto a piece of tracing paper. Tape the tracing paper down with minimal tape if necessary. Uh, so I really think that I can hold on to this and trace, but if you're kind of nervous about doing more than one thing at once, take just little pieces of tape and tape down the sides. Now, when you're tracing with the tape, the tracing paper, it's gonna be really important that you press a little bit harder on your pencil. You want a little bit of a very dark line. Uh, so, in the last video, I just very gently sketched. I'm gonna actually be pressing extremely hard with my pencil because I want tons of graphite to be on this tracing paper. So make sure if you're right-handed, you go from left to right so you don't get a ton of graphite on your hand. If you're left-handed, go to right to left, I think. Yes, all right. <laughs> Alright, so now what I'm going to do is take my tracing paper design off very carefully. Don't worry about taking the tape off if you don't need to. And we're going to go to number three. So you're going to get your linoleum from Mrs. Cantrell or I, and you're going to, I'd like you on the actual side, you can just put your initials and your period. Uh, that way it doesn't mess with anything that you're drawing with. And what you're going to do 
is you're gonna actually take that tracing paper and you're gonna flip it backwards. I know that that's gonna be really weird because you just spent all this time drawing forwards and we're gonna flip it backwards, but when we stamp, we're gonna be stamping a mirror image so it'll go back to your original design. So if that's confusing to you, just trust in the process, I promise it'll work. So with the graphite side facing down, you wanna make sure that you have your image where you want it to be. Take your time placing it because you don't wanna move it once it's placed. Then I'm going to carefully hold, one hand's gonna be putting pressure down, holding my tracing paper, and the other hand is gonna use just a finger, maybe even two, and I'm gonna be putting pressure over all of my pencil lines. If I need to switch hands, I try and make that as seamless as possible. I wanna make sure that I put pressure on all my lines so that graphite gets absorbed into the linoleum or lino. And I'm just gonna kind of peel up a corner to make sure I transferred. And if I feel like it's a little light, I'll just kind of put a little bit more pressure. And then when you peel up your design, you will have a backwards image of what you have drawn. Ta-da! You can throw this away. You don't need this anymore. Now it's time to move on to step four. You need to go over your transferred lines and ultra fine or fine sharpie, but the smaller the lines are the harder to carve. Um, so we really need to have a conversation about positive and negative space here. We are not doing any type of linoleum stamps that have any type of shading to them. We're staying very high contrast, meaning, meaning that we're only gonna have two values. We're gonna have white and we're gonna have black. There's gonna be no grade shades between so that's why my drawing is very line based um, and you guys need to understand that whatever is left white or pencil you're going to carve away so it's going to disappear so i went ahead and did an example uh, of what that's going to look like with another crystal drawing that i did so everything that's white i'm going to carve away in this design so if i want my crystal to be black i want to make sure to leave all this white space or pencil space that white space, is it's going to go away. It's going to be the recessed areas of your design. So in this snowy owl, everything that was white, even its feathers, I carved away. Whatever I wanted to stay black stayed raised. Okay, so I have a few words here to help you remember the difference between the white space and the black space. When we're talking about white space, we're talking about the carving away space, we're talking about negative space, and we're talking about the recessed space. So that's, again, it's the space that's going away. When we're talking about the black Sharpie space, that's the space you want to keep. So in this owl, I never, ever, ever carved into the feathers that I wanted to stay black uh, or inked. So the black Sharpie represents the areas where you want to keep the linoleum stamp raised. You want that part to be positive, you want that part to be raised, you want that part to be inked. So there's two ways of going about this. So I have this very simple line drawing. I could do a little bit of a more simple way, uh, which is this way on the left. So by leaving white space here, all around here, it's kind of harder to draw first, but when I go to carve, I'm carving away all this white space. This way, leaving it as a line drawing is more difficult because I have to actually go in and carve away around all these really intricate lines. It really just depends on the look that you're going for, um, but these basically are kind of flip-flopped of each other because the crystal's black over here with white outline. Over here, the crystal is white with black outline. You need to make the decision before you start doing Sharpie where you want your ink to go and where you don't want ink to go. So if you need help with this, ask Mrs. Cantrell and I because we know that it's a really complicated idea, this positive and negative space. But hopefully, looking at these two examples, you can see black crystal, carve away the white, white crystal, carve around the black. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a black Sharpie and an ultra thin Sharpie if I have smaller areas. I honestly prefer just to use the fine Sharpie because if you have a really skinny line and you wanna carve that line, you're gonna to have to carve on this side of the line and this side of the line. And if you're new to this, that can be really difficult. If you've done carving before, then go ahead and use the ultra fine line. 
I just prefer doing the fine on such a small piece of art. So I'm gonna go with the harder option. I'm gonna outline my crystals. I'm gonna go wherever I put this black Sharpie is where I'm not going to carve. Anywhere that stays white, or I guess this is kind of like a light gray. Anywhere that stays gray or white is going to be carved away. Oh, and if you notice your Sharpie not drawing that well, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect drawing, just as long as the Sharpie's on there. I recommend keeping your paper by you so you can kind of reduce the Sharpie because uh, it doesn't always love drawing on top of the linoleum. So sometimes you just have to give it a little rejuice as you're working. So the last thing I'm gonna do uh, is I like to have a little bit of emphasis on my crystals that are in the front. I want them to be a little bit closer to the viewer. So I'm just gonna go back, back and thicken up my lines. That way I know when I'm carving that I need to leave a thicker line in the front. All right, it's now time to carve. All right, we are going to start carving. We want to remind you of a couple of things. Our room is all about safety. So if you decide to use these and poke them on yourselves, hurt yourself, hurt others around you, threaten to hurt others around you, it is an automatic zero for this project. So it is really important that you are using the materials the way that they are intended to be used and you are using them as art materials not weapons, not even threatening of weapons or anything like that. So like I said, you're going to have, you have a skinnier one and a bigger one. You will be using these according to the number that you have in your class. That way, if they go missing, we know who to look for. You're going to, of course, need your stamp. You also can have the option of using this bench hook. So the bench hook hooks to the edge of your table and allows you to put the stamp against it. That way, when you're carving, um, it stays put and it's locked in against that bench hook. I don't like bench hooks on something so small um, since it can basically fit in the palm of my hand. I really like to just maneuver the, the linoleum uh, by myself, but you can use a bench hook if you're having some control issues. So when you are doing linoleum, the best way to start carving is with your thinnest one. I like to always outline all my areas that I'm gonna do, whether I choose um, the way where you have to just carve out the white lines or if I have to carve around the black lines, I always like to start with the skinny one as kind of like your outliner, sort of like when you guys are doing a drawing and you outline in marker and then you go back in color. When you are using either type of linoleum carver, it's really important that you don't mess around with this. Uh, this is like what keeps it in place, and there's like a bunch of different mechanisms in there. If someone happens to have a loose one, here's how you put it back together. There's like a C, a ball, and a C. You just put it back in between the ball and the C, being careful to hold on to the sides, not the top, obviously, and then you righty tidy to make sure it's in place. Sometimes when people work, they accidentally like put their fingers on here and it, it loosens it up because if lefty loosey, righty tidy. But if you just kind of kind of sure it back up, you'll be okay. I always recommend to hold your linoleum tool just like a pencil. Um, but instead, what you're doing is you're making a carving mechanism. When I was teaching elementary school, I always said it was like a wave. You're going underneath the wave. You want to dig down and then kind of ride the wave. Um, so I always tell people when you're first making your first cut, you kind of are going in at an angle, but then you should be straightening out what you're doing. You don't want to continue to dig down like you were digging a hole because we're not digging a hole. We're, we're trying to glide across the linoleum. So when you're carving, you're just making a very gentle downward dig and then scraping along. It's very important that when you're carving, you are carving away from your hand. So you always wanna make sure that you never carve towards your fingers, you're gonna bleed. 
It's gonna happen. So you have to position your stamp so that you're always carving away from your from yourself, like your actual body, because if I was carving this way and stabbed my stomach, that would be horrible. So make sure that you're carving away from your body and you're never carving towards your hand. So even though I'm not going towards my body, right now I'd be going towards my hand. So it's all about using your other hand to stabilize your stamp and to spin it around where you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to outline my black lines here. And when you make your cut, you want to, when you get to the end of making your cut, you wanna, you do your little dig in, you do your little glide, and then you wanna come up. It's really important that you are looking at where the edge of your linoleum cutter is. So let me show you over here. Um, I'm actually making sure that the edge of this is lining up with the line because if I was digging right here, I'd be carving into my line. So it's really important that you are paying attention to the edge of this linoleum because you see how I just got right there. So again, making sure that you're, this is gonna take very special close attention, but wherever the left lines up is where you wanna go. Or if you're judging by the right, like right now I am, Wherever the edge of your linoleum carver <laughs> cutter lines up, you wanna make sure it's matched up with the outside edge of your line. Now, if you're inside a space and it's kind of difficult to come up, you still do the dig down, the glide, and then just gently kind of go up with your hands. So you're down, you're gliding, you're coming up. So you're coming up from air, that water analogy that I was using. And then if you want to, once you get an area outlined, then you can go and you can dig with that little bit of a bigger one and it makes the area go away a little bit quicker. If you happen to be digging, if you dig like this and you notice that your area that you're digging is wider than the tip of the linoleum carver, you're going too deep. You always wanna make sure when you're digging, you're staying within the width of your blade. Um, if you dig really low like this, you're gonna end up taking off a chunk and that's gonna make for a really messy linoleum carb and it also won't let you be able to use the back side if you want to later. So I'm gonna to continue to carve this, but I do wanna show you guys just really quickly. Uh, I mentioned that this way is a little bit easier having the uh, crystal um, in my drawing chain, my line drawing actually being the crystal black and the lines be white. And the reason is that you're seeing how focused I am carving in and around all these lines. If you just leave it white like this, then all I have to do is carve out the lines. So if you kind of think that you're not gonna do such a hot job with this project, I'd maybe go with this option because all that black space I'm gonna leave alone. I'm not trying to carve around it. I'm trying, well I am carving around it, but I'm not carving around it as hard as I was carving here. I'll show you what it's like to carve on this one and this crystal, which are the exact same.
So as you can see, they actually were pretty comparable in times, but this one I just had to carve out lines. This one I had to carve out lines and I had to carve out sections. So just so you guys get an idea of how much time it takes. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to finish carving out this stamp based off of my design for today. So I just made a big mistake right here. I just carved into my black. You can't get that linoleum back. So you have to kind of adjust on the spot. You guys are not gonna get more than one piece of linoleum. So I know that since I haven't carved over here yet on this part of the crystal, I'm just gonna take my black marker and kind of readjust my line and adjust on the spot. The best part about printmaking is it's okay to make mistakes. As long as you're trying your best, uh, you're gonna come out with something that looks really cool.
Okay, so now that I've got everything carved, it's time to check my work. So if I look very closely at my work, I want to make sure that whatever's raised, so when I look from the side, whatever's kind of standing up is what I want to be printed. For example, right here, see how I did not go as close to that line as I should have? Now is the time to take my tool, again, making sure the edge of my tool lines up with the edge of my line, and I'm going to just sure that up a little bit. Another thing to make sure at this time, if you had to make like a lot of cuts, sometimes you can get sort of a scalloped edge. So I like to take my tool and go right along and scrape those scallop edge off. A lot of students sometimes ask me, you know, Miss Braun, did I make a deep enough cut? If your fingernail grabs it, you made a deep enough cut. If like your fig fingernail goes down and you can feel it. So I'm just gonna double check my lines and make sure I like the way everything looks. Uh, if you don't like the way that your edges look, then you can carve. See how these like kind of, when these print, these will be like little triangles. If I want them to be carved away, I just gotta take that and get rid of that scallop. So I'm just gonna double check my work. Okay, so whenever you are done carving at the end of class, um, or if you're even partially done carving, you guys will put these back in a box for your class, but you need to not put these carvings on the ground. That's not the janitor's job to clean that up. So what I like to do is I like to take a piece of paper, just my planning paper, and I just like to kind of scrape everything in a pile and then put it on the paper, kind of use my paper as a dustpan, and then these little pieces should be thrown in the trash can. Do not take them out of the class. Do not throw them at anybody. If we hear about that, then you will not be using linoleum anymore. So go ahead and throw these away, and we are ready for a test print. We're gonna be using these stamp pads. It's You guys have probably seen these before when a teacher maybe a stamp something they might have like a regular looking stamp like this and they stamp it down and stamp your paper that's essentially what we're doing but it's important that we do a practice one first just to make sure that your project looks the way that you want it to look i'm just going to use the back of my paper and i'm going to take my stamp i'm going to make sure that there's no little crummies on it and i'm going to press it down into the stamp and i'm not going to get my fingers inky at all or you shouldn't but the mechanism that I'm gonna use is just, I'm gonna press very gently and kind of work my way around the stamp to make sure that each part of the stamp is receiving ink. Then I'm gonna very carefully use the tips of my fingers and hold it up. It might look super inky like that. And then I'm going to, in one shot, press it down. If you move your stamp, while it's on the paper, it's gonna come out with a smudgy stamp. We wanna go straight down with our pressure and once it makes contact with the paper, we wanna apply firm pressure down with our fingers. Again, working all the way around that stamp, not moving the stamp, your fingers are moving around the stamp. And then just lift off. And if you're happy with it, then you can go ahead and start printing your final copy. I like the way that this looks. Your ink isn't gonna be totally black. It's gonna have a little bit of this dottiness to it. That's kind of the look that we're going for. Also, you're gonna notice stuff around your white space. This happened on all of my example pictures. Um, that stuff is called noise. So that happens in printmaking because you're making all of these different carvings and you have this beautiful noise that accidentally happens from your higher but still carved away ridges, leave it. It's an awesome part of printmaking. It gives a lot of character to your print. So I'm gonna get out my final copy paper since I'm happy with my Stamparoo. And I'm going to place my paper like this because I think that's the easiest way to do it. And I'm going to very quickly write my name, what period, and flip that to the back. And you're gonna be making six prints, one right after the other. And you're gonna try and line them up as well as you can. So you wanna make sure that your edge that you lay down is parallel with your other edge. So I'm going to print. I'm gonna ink up, not print. 
and this is my little stamp or you can call it your lino lino plate I just like to make sure that it got stamped. You can kind of tell because it has, see that little wet glare on it? You have to work kind of quickly. And I'm going to make sure that my stamp is all the way to the left edge, that my left edge of my stamp lines up with the left edge of my paper. And again, I'm gonna go and push it down in one motion. If you make a mistake, if you're a little bit diagonal, who cares, it's okay. And I'm going to put my pressure down I'm gonna make sure I get the middle of my stamp. A lot of people forget about the middle. I'm gonna make sure I get all my nice edges. The good thing about our stamp being so small is that you should be able to evenly print it pretty well. Then I'm gonna make sure my hand is clean. I'm gonna hold my paper down and I'm gonna carefully peel my stamp off. Oh, revealing my beautiful crystal print. So I have a couple options here. Well, you only have two options. I can continue to print in this direction with the crystals pointing up or the next time I print, I can flip it this way and I can kind of have fun twisting and turning it and every time it would kind of go in a different direction. That's your personal choice. We'll leave that up to you. But the next time that I print, I still want to make sure, even though I'm on my second print, that I'm fully inking up my stamp and that I'm lining up whichever edge I'm choosing. So I am going to kind of have some fun with it and go backwards. Now, even though this line is slightly crooked, I need to line up my stamp with that the best that I can. So I don't have like a weird gap. And then again, apply the firm pressure and you guys are gonna do this six times. So I am finished. As you guys can see, because I left a little gap here and a little gap here, I ran out of a little bit of room here, but it's okay. It's printmaking. You make mistakes. Make sure that you please close your stamp nice and tight and return it to where you got it so that somebody else can use it. This is called a print. Needs to probably dry for at least 10 minutes until you can't, when you touch it, it doesn't have any ink that comes off or it doesn't rub. As far as your plate, you should just quickly wash this in some water. Kind of use your fingers to get in there. Um, and then you guys should dry it off and you can, as long as it's dry, you can return it back to the box. All right, now it is time to do the mixed media part. You guys are now going to, in the white space, create any type of beautiful mixed media. Now what we mean by mixed media, another word for media is art materials. So you're going to use mixed art materials. Uh, you have the choice to do colored pencils, watercolor, or marker. You can combine them all and use them all, or you can just use one. Uh, but the reason that it's mixed media is because we did ink, printing, plus whatever media we're using next. But if you want to become a risk taker, you can use all the different medias. Also, if there's another media that you would like or another art material that you would like, just talk to Mrs. Cantrell or me and we'll see what we can do. So in the white space now, you're going to do some coloring. Now you can end up leaving some purposeful white space. So for example, in this wooden one that I did, I colored everything. I just, I actually used highlighter for this, believe it or not. And it turned out really nice. Um, for this owl, because she's a snowy owl, and I call her she because she reminds me of Hedwig from Ho um, Harry Potter, I left purposeful white space, and I left the snow space and around her white, but that's purposeful. That makes sense. Same thing with this birch tree painting. It's I kind of imagine the background to all be white and the actual branch kind of stuff to be here white, but I actually would like to go back with gray and maybe make the sky gray but you can see I just painted in the white space there. So when you're using colored pencils, it's pretty self-explanatory, but something that I wanna encourage you guys to do is to use the techniques that you learned from Mrs. Cantrell in the art journal workshop. So do things like blending from one color to another because it will make your project look so super cool and you'll be like an awesome, amazing artist and not a lame -o. 
just saying. So use some of the techniques that you've been taught and I'm just gonna fill up all my white space. And again, unless I wanna leave intentional white space. So mark color pencil, pretty easy. I could even use some of those cool stippling techniques, the hatching techniques, things like that with marker. Just like always, a good colorer goes around the edges first and then colors in the space. These are super tiny markers. But you guys can use Crayola, you can use Sharpie. I know some of you guys have fancy art markers. Feel free to use them. Now, one thing with markers that you might notice is some of the ink might pull off. If it does, don't freak out, it's okay. Um, it just depends on how much extra ink is there sometimes it pulls off. The other option that you guys can do is watercolor. Um, with watercolor, same thing as the marker, since you're kind of putting a wet surface over it, it might pull a little bit of the ink off and just kind of create a grayed out look. Uh, when I look at my examples, I did a snowy scene with watercolor. You can see that it kind of, the gray kind of, or the black from my ink kind of mixed with the colors and made like a gray, but I actually think it looks kind of cool. So just be aware of that, that that could possibly happen. It might not happen to you guys at all. It just sort of depends. But when you are working with the watercolor, because you're working on just drawing paper, don't completely wet your paper and make it super flooding. Um, your paper's gonna get like really wrinkly and yucky, um, but you don't wanna use really sticky watercolor. So it's kind of like Goldilocks, like not too much water, not too little water. So I always like to load up my brush, but make sure I have enough water on it. And then just when you're working, just kind of lightly color over some places. Feel free to use some of those techniques that you used in the art journal workshop. Hopefully you guys are starting to see the reason why we did the art journal workshop is so you can continue to be excellent, amazing artists. So we expect that every single section should be colored and I would recommend coloring each section differently um, or you could do the same in each one but what we don't want is you to do like a big stripe of red, a big stripe of orange, a big stripe of yellow, a big stripe of green or something like that. We want you to be smart about how you're color treating each section of your stamp. So even though with this peacock feather I did all the same for each one, I still treated each stamp as one area that I was coloring as I was working on it. I was coloring each sixth section, if that hopefully makes sense. So enjoy coloring with color pencil, marker, or watercolor.